Earlier this month, I released my video on RMC by the numbers. That was a lot of RMC to take, but I got a suggestion from the dashcam kid 6175 to re-rank my RMCs, and I thought it was about time I did so. The last time I did this was way back in 2018. I've written six others since then, and as they say, things change. For those who don't know, RMC stands for Rocky Mountain Construction, and they burst on the scene in 2011, converting old wooden coasters into steel hybrids, producing some of the best coasters in the world, also mixing it up with their single rail model. Today, let's go around the corners of America and re-rank the RMCs from worst to best. As of the end of 2023, there are 20 RMCs in the US. I've ridden 19 of them, so I'll try to place the one I haven't ridden the best I can. I've also ridden one outside the US, and at the end, I'll tell you where that one ranks up. Number 20, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. We assumed that the RMC Raptor was gonna be for the smaller parks, and the bigger parks were gonna get the T-Rex. Instead of single file seating, that would be two across, albeit still with a single rail. These would be much taller, a better fit for a bigger park with better capacity. Instead, the big parks just got taller Raptors, and they took care of that capacity issue by adding more seats on the train. Jersey Devil is 130 feet tall and has 12 car trains, and being used to the breakneck pace of the original Raptors, I wasn't expecting this to be so tame. It just seemed like it was going through the motions, pretty much zero force even in the back, and I left severely disappointed. No surprise, this finished last place in pacing on my By the Numbers video. Number 19, Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is basically the same thing as Jersey Devil, but opening a year later, people swore they fixed the problems that made Jersey Devil run so slow. After riding this a bunch of times late last year, it definitely is better. It's not a boring ride by any means, but when you're talking about RMC, just about everything else still beats it. Also, these Raptors have over-the-shoulder restraints, and even though they aren't terrible, they restrict your airtime, and that goes against everything I stand for. Number 18, Stunt Pilot at Silverwood. Here's the one American RMC I haven't ridden. I went to Silverwood in 2019, and two years later, they opened this Raptor. It makes sense, the RMC factory is only about 15 minutes away from this park in Idaho. This is basically the same as the two originals, but it doesn't have that bump before the first drop. It just turns and falls straight off. Also, it has 10 car trains instead of eight, splitting the difference between the originals and the new ones we just talked about. It seems like the longer the train, the more sluggish it is. Shorter trains seem to whip around its course faster. If you've ridden this, let me know how it compares to the other Raptors. But from an outsider's point of view, this doesn't look as good as the original two. Number 17, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This was the first Raptor to open back in 2018, having a nice setting over the water, using a moving station to keep those three trains on the course and the line as short as possible. I was very impressed the first time I rode this, but given it's 24 seconds of prime ride time, it just doesn't stack up with the other longer RMCs and the ones with just a lap bar. The pacing on this ride is insane, tearing around its course with sharp drops, fast and tight turns, and whippy inversions. The last time I rode this in 2022, it was running insanely rough and only with one train. I'm pretty sure those two things are related and that insane ride is short-lived. Still, it made me drop it behind my next coaster. Number 16, Rail Blazer at California's Great America. This was my first Raptor experience, riding this on his Passholder Preview Day in 2018, and everything I said about Wonder Woman applies to this. Instead of water, this is located in the middle of the park and has some rock work. It doesn't use a moving station, but as of 2021, it runs very smooth. It's short, but powerful, and it's that power that makes some people rank it higher, but I do value a long ride as long as it can keep its speed. Number 15, New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. Here's the original, the one that started this whole revolution. And it's funny how when this came out, it was seen as one of the best coasters in the world. It just shows how expectations change. Converted from the 1990 DIN Corporation coaster, the Texas Giant, the new Texas Giant stands 153 feet tall and covers 4,200 feet of track. I said, I value a long ride as long as it can keep its speed. And this gives you more than a full minute of ride time. But that last lap has basically no power. Also, some of the elements in the first half seem like filler. It has some fantastic moments. The first drop, the airtime hill before the mid-course, and the hill under the lift hill. But the ride leaves you a bit underwhelmed, and I'm not a fan of those Gerslauer trains. RMC used these before they developed their own trains, and it's hard not to get stapled. Number 14, Goliath at Six Flags Great America. RMC offered Six Flags a tall, compact model to replace their old B&M stand-up in Iron Wolf, and Six Flags took the bait. 
I was so hyped to ride this for the first time back in 2016. I even had this ranked over lightning rod on my hype list, but I didn't realize just how short the ride was. It's only 34 seconds long, but by the end, you're left trying to catch your breath. It's one of the best paced RMCs, but I feel like it has too many filler elements. There are two good moments at airtime, that 180 foot drop and then the ejector hill after the turnaround. Then you have a great dive loop and a great stall, but that's pretty much all it has in terms of quality elements. Number 13, Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia. When this ride was announced in 2017, the first thing people noticed was how short it was. This is a conversion of the 1990 Din Wooden Coaster, Georgia Cyclone, and it was only given two laps around his course, resulting in a 34 second ride time, same as Goliath. It's just a small scale RMC. A 100 foot drop puts it at the bottom. It's the slowest RMC at 50 miles an hour, but this actually does have some power. If you ride this early, you might miss it, but if you let it warm up, it's worth your time. The wave turn is awesome, and that drop into the structure is the best part of the ride. So much power. It's got some interesting elements and it's worth riding. Just temper your expectations and enjoy the ride for what it is. Number 12, Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. When I first rode this in 2018, it was the last RMC I needed to complete the US. When the ride was over, I realized it was the only RMC I've ever ridden that I didn't really enjoy the first time around. For a couple years, it was my least favorite non-Raptor RMC, but as you can see, it's starting to rise up the ranks. Being my new home park RMC, I've grown to appreciate it. From the first drop to final breaks, it's 37 seconds of fury. It's got a great first drop at 162 feet, going into inversions, sharp airtime hills, all of this out in the woods, and it has one of the great finales of all time with back-to-back -back barrel rolls. Aside from being a short ride, this is also super bumpy. I think this would be much better if it replaces wooden topper track with steel eyebox track, and I bet that happens in the future. Number 11, Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This is the much maligned RMC among enthusiasts. It gets a lot of hate for its layout, but I've never had a problem with it. I do admit, the last time I rode it, some of the airtime moments felt weak, but I think it has a very unique layout, focusing a lot on inversions, but also throwing in some good airtime moments, including this double down. This used to be Roar, a GCI wooden coaster from 1999, and RMC did a good job with what they had to work with. 100 feet tall, 3200 feet long, easily the best coaster in the park and my favorite coaster in Northern California. Number 10, Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This was RMC's second project, and already you can see the upgrade over the original. Iron Rattler was born from the Rattler, an RCCA wooden coaster from 1992, built on top of and into a quarry wall. Iron Rattler does the same, diving down 179 feet, jumping on and off the quarry wall, and one of the great airtime moments ever, the final cliff dive into the tunnel finale. At 38 seconds, it's kind of a short ride, and I think it loses some steam on top of the quarry wall, but at its peak, this was my number 11 overall coaster, and it's still my favorite coaster in the state of Texas. Number 9, Wildcat's Revenge at Hershey Park. After years of speculation, the original GCI Wildcat was shut down and RMC got their hands on it, and the first thing they did was make it 34 feet taller. This is the advantage for newer conversions, and it really started with Steel Vengeance. RMC not settling for the existing height and adding on to it. The first half is really amazing, mixing in airtime, hang time, whip, laterals, and then you hit the second half, and that's what's knocking it down to the middle tier. If it could keep up that excellence before the overbank, this is a top 5 RMC, but I just didn't think there was anything special about the ending. Number 8, Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. This really blew me away the first time I rode it in 2018. I got 6 straight rides, and I was stunned by how much power it has. It's not big, or long, and doesn't have great pacing. But at the time, I was hard pressed to think of a stronger RMC. When I came back in 2020, I wasn't feeling that power as much and I had to drop it. This used to be Twisted Twins, a dual track CCI wooden coaster from 1998, but one side was torn out and the other side got the RMC treatment. I love that first Camelback, that airtime hill before the 0G roll, and then the trick track double up really tosses you out of your seat. I need to get back and give this another try and see if I can recapture the magic of those 2018 rides. Number 7. Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. This was just built for airtime and I'm all here for it. This is the opposite of Storm Chaser. My first rides were in 2018 and they were very good but not great. But it was my 2022 rides that took it to the next level. This is just pure fun. From that triple camelback to the outer bank churn that gives you some weird powerful airtime and all those bunny hops and rolls at the end, riding so low to the ground, there's not a dull moment on this ride. This used to be Hurler, built by International Coasters back in 1994, and RMC pretty much stuck to the same layout. They just made the elements so much better. Number 6, Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. 
By far, the coaster that I've ridden the most. The thing that gets me about Twisted Colossus is how every element is good. Every moment on this ride stands on its own, and when you've ridden this enough, you start thinking about the next element and they're all so good. This was the classic 1978 Woody Colossus, and as that was losing popularity, RMC gave it new life. It even preserved its racing aspect, designing the blue and the green side to duel, and on every ride, you get to experience both tracks. Personally, I'm Team Blue Side. It has such great airtime, but the green side has that Top Gun stall and that's spectacular. You don't always get to duel, but that's just the cherry on top. This ride experience stands on its own. Number 5. Lightning Rod at Dollywood I first rode this in its opening week in 2016, and it shot up to my number 3 overall spot. That launch lift hill would thrust the train over the top and down the 165 foot drop, and I couldn't believe how much airtime I had on the other side of that hill. The wave turn had great airtime, who knew? Both those twist and shout elements, plus the legendary quad down, delivering quick pops of ejector. I rode this again in 2019, and it lost some power and started getting rough. I came back in 2022 where I got some steel track to smooth it out. This ride is still amazing, even if it's nowhere near as good as it was when it was new. And now it's losing its launch for the 2024 season. I'll have to get back there next year to ride this with this new high speed chain lift and see if it can remain a top 5 RMC. Number 4. Iron Guazi at Busch Gardens Tampa There was so much hype over this, and there was so much speculation over what Busch Gardens would do with her 1999 dueling GCIs, Guazi. In 2019, we got our answer. RMC doubled its original height and made this a hyper hybrid. The first time I rode this after opening, it ran slow and it wasn't very good. But as the day went along, this launched itself into my overall top 10. You aren't going to find any RMC in America that has better pacing, and you can feel that aggression from start to finish. That barrel roll down drop shouldn't even be legal, it's so insane. I could ride this all day and never get bored with those elements. Number 3. Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England My first RMC came back in 2015, and I had never ridden anything like it before. I guess at the time, the only thing that came close was El Toro, and over the next 3 years, I rode other RMCs, but this one was still my favorite. I got back in 2018 to retest it, and even though it ran slow in the morning, it made up for it later on once it got warmed up, and by the end of the day, it stayed in my top 5. Then 2021 comes around, and it's time to test it again. It can't possibly still be that good, right? Well, it was even better than 2018. Apparently, they did something during the COVID closure to make it run faster, and it was noticeable. It's such a long ride with that third lap, but at only 109 feet tall, its pacing becomes a problem. This layout is so good, I can't possibly drop it right now. Number 2. Air Force One at Fun Spot Atlanta After 17 rides this year, I got to know this coaster very, very well. I describe this as an all-star team of the best RMC elements. Great 146 foot drop, unique Raven truss dive, tremendous zero-g stall, a huge outer banked hill which I love on every coaster. Then the best part of the ride, this huge double up. Then you got this insane roll, an ejector outer bank, a huge turnaround, another roll, and then the insane finale, just ripping through those hills before plowing to the final breaks. Even though the first half is great, this is a second half ride. I can't express how perfect this layout is, and it was a joy to ride 17 times and set a personal single day record. Just watch your thighs. There's so much powerful airtime, you will get sore after 7 rides. There's only one reason this isn't number 1. It just can't match the complete ride experience you get with my top RMC. Number 1. Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point I said it before and I'll say it again. RMC and Cedar Point built this to be the world's best coaster, and they nailed it. They took the 1991 Din Wooden Coaster of Mean Streak, already massive to begin with, and they added 44 feet on top of it, bringing it over 200 feet and becoming the first hyper hybrid. Then they gave it 3 laps around the course, lasting 77 seconds and covering over a mile of track, giving that sustained airtime. Quick pops of ejector, crazy whip over four inversions, head choppers, a great airtime pack finale. The coaster is just a masterpiece, and it's my number one RMC and number one coaster overall. I mentioned there is one RMC that I've ridden outside of America, and that's Wildfire at Kilmarden. This RMC Woody is at a Swedish zoo, starting with a 161 foot drop, covering over 4,100 feet of track. It's got possibly the best stall ever, a huge wave turn, an amazing train setting. It's an amazing coaster. Say this was in America, where would it rank on this list? I'd plug it in at number 10, right behind Wildcat's Revenge and right in front of Iron Rattler. My biggest problem is the second half. You can feel the ride die as it starts getting low to the ground, and aside from a great roll, there isn't much there to get excited about. Kind of like Wildcat's Revenge. Elite first half, forgettable second half. That's a wrap for this list. Let me know what you think in the comments, where you agree or disagree and why. 
If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you want to see more content like this, please give me a sub. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server. That has a new section for a nightly news roundup in the theme park world. And my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. And my baseball channel, if you also happen to love baseball like I do. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.